Unknown. One of the biggest mysteries to have ever been added to the Pokemon franchise. What are they? And where did they come from? What is their purpose? For generations, these questions have plagued the Pokemon community. Yet today, I offer you a solution to these long-standing queries. The unknown are biblically accurate angels. Allow me to prove it. Mind Plate. The original one breathed alone before the universe came. The original one is this transcendent being that existed before all other things in the Pokemon universe. From it sprang aspects of itself, Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, to help shape existence around them. The facet of this being that we as lowly mortals get to interact with is this Pokemon of legend, Arceus. A simple avatar of a much higher power, a mere fraction of the original one's omnipotence. Arceus is revered as a god of the Pokemon universe and is said to have single-handedly shaped the whole thing. Due to this legendary status, we can draw parallels between Arceus and religious descriptions of gods, and perhaps more specifically, the Judeo-Christian capital G god. Like the fact that Arceus uses lots of these and thous, shouts and hasts when it speaks, reminiscent of the language seen in the King James Bible. Plus the concept of a creator deity with long flowing white hair evokes the image of God to many viewers, even if it is attached to a llama. And then there's judgment, this signature move of Arceus, connoting the righteous judgment of God upon the sinful. But God does not work alone. Beside him to do his bidding exist angels, celestial beings tasked with spreading the word of the Lord. And in case you didn't know, the ones seen in the Bible aren't like those found in Renaissance paintings. No, no, these are truly terrifying creatures that strike fear into the hearts of all they meet. Why do you think they're forced to start every conversation with do not be afraid? Some of the descriptions we have for angels consist of those like the cherubim. No, not little chubby babies with wings, but a creature with four wings and four heads. One of a man, an ox, a lion, and an eagle, all the color of brass, shedding light like fire. At least, that's how they're described in the book of Ezekiel. In this book, the cherubim are said to carry the throne of God and act as his chariots, though they too do not work alone. Allow me to introduce you to the Ophanim, the wheels of God's chariot, the many-eyed ones, the beings that I shall argue act as a direct parallel for unknown. As for the appearance of the wheels and their construction, their appearance was like the gleaming of beryl, and the four had the same form, their construction being like a wheel within a wheel. When they moved, they moved in any of the four directions without veering as they moved. Their rims were tall and awesome, for the rims of all four were full of eyes all around. If you don't know what the unknown are, they're Pokemon with 28 forms that all look like an eye surrounded by black appendages that resemble the characters of the Latin alphabet as well as a question mark and exclamation mark. Though within the games they are incredibly weak, capable only of utilizing the singular move Hidden Power, their true form seems to be hidden from the player. As within the lore of the Pokemon world, they're capable of shaping reality to their will when in large enough numbers. Side note, even though we as players recognize the unknown represent letters of the Latin alphabet, within the world of Pokemon, they're said to resemble the letters of an ancient civilization, which has been lost to time. Perhaps the Celestials, who were one of the first people to interact with Arceus through the Hero of Legend. It has been a long-held belief by many of the Pokemon community that Unknown may have been the ones to teach humans language, using both their bodies to form the alphabet and their telepathic powers to communicate. Yet, if this is the case, it would seem that most have moved on from these initial teachings. In Legends Arceus, we do see that Calibur is capable of reading the Unknown inscription within the Salacion Ruins, but as far as I'm aware, we've seen no other character be able to do so. Even the scientists studying the unknown in the ruins of Alf fail to understand their meaning. Who knows, considering Calibur is at the ripe old age of 99 when we meet her, she was likely taught this alphabet before it fell out of common use, giving us a rough time estimate for when humans started moving away from the unknown language. So, why do I suggest that the unknown are based on the biblical description of the Ophanim? First, and most obviously, the eyes. Unknown or eyes. And if we look at the third Pokemon movie, Spell of the Unknown, we can see an illustration of a person beholding the unknown who have formed the shapes amongst themselves of wheels within wheels covered in eyes. Arguably as well, the pillars behind the unknown in this image could be depicting those of Spear Pillar, which is where the player encounters Arceus in the games. What's more, 
Throughout this movie, we see that when the unknown use their power to reshape reality, they individually move in circular patterns, but as a group, they once again form those wheels within wheels. So perhaps much in the same way as Arceus is merely an aspect of the original one, an individual unknown is but an aspect of the larger being. Only when unknown appear en masse do they possess their true power. In theory, the fact that unknown can only know hidden power, a move that takes on the characteristics of any singular typing, demonstrates that only together can they utilize the true power of Arceus, the power to wield all the types. But do you really think I'd assert that this is the inspiration for the unknown on appearance alone? You've got to give me more credit than that. The similarities go way deeper. For instance, the spiritual writer Rosemary Ellen Gilly states in her book, The Encyclopedia of Angels, that the thrones, also known as Ophanim or Galgalin, are creatures that function as the actual chariots of God driven by the cherubs. They are characterized by peace and submission. God rests upon them. Thrones are depicted as great wheels containing many eyes and reside in the area of the cosmos where material form begins to take shape. They chant glorious to God and remain forever in his presence. They mete out divine justice and maintain the cosmic harmony of all universal laws. In this one quote, we can draw several connections. Perhaps most notably, that line that mentions that Ophanim reside in the area of the cosmos where material form begins to take shape. In the Diamond and Pearl era of the Pokemon movies, we were introduced to the Pokemon cosmological model and how the world of Pokemon exists within a singular dimension surrounded by four others, those of Arceus, Dialga, Palkia, and the distortion world belonging to Giratina. It is between these dimensions that the unknown are believed to exist, as we see that when the dimensions of Dialga and Palkia collide, their attacks tear holes in those dimensions, scattering unknown across the void. So it's likely that the unknown dimension we see in the third movie likely exists in the space between these material worlds, separate from the influences of space and time, yet simultaneously carrying those powers to all dimensions they touch. Then there's the line, they chant glorious to God and remain forever in his presence. This too perfectly describes the unknown. You see, within the ruins of Alf, the first location within the games that the unknown were ever introduced to us, we can use the radio function of the Pokegear to tune into a channel not accessible anywhere else. The strange music radiating from our Pokegear is believed to be the voice of the unknown communicating through radio waves. And the song they sing? Why, it's none other than the sound of the Azure flute. The instrument used to summon Arceus to Spear Pillar. So, even in Generation 2, the unknown were calling out to an as yet unrevealed god, chanting, Glory to his name. But what about Ophanum always being in the presence of God? In most interactions we have with Arceus, the unknown are nowhere to be seen. Well, of course. We've already explained why you can't see them, because they exist in the realm between the material, only making themselves present and visible when deemed necessary, as is the case when Arceus is brought to the Sinjo ruins. In what is likely the coolest cutscene in Pokemon's history, we see how Arceus utilizes the power of the unknown, who materialized from seemingly nowhere, to give birth to a new guardian of space, time, or antimatter. And here lies yet another connection to the Ophanim. As the wheels of God's chariot, the Ophanim are said to act as trans-dimensional transport for both angels and God. Surely, that is exactly what we are seeing in this cutscene. Arceus using the unknown to pull a newly formed Pokemon egg across dimensions into the world our player character inhabits. And with that, I have definitively proved that Game Freak used the Ophanim as the inspiration for the unknown. <laughs> yeah, right. So, here's the thing. Pokemon very rarely only have a singular source of inspiration. So, even if everything I've said thus far is true, it's incredibly unlikely to be the full story. After all, even Arceus does not solely pull from the Judeo-Christian god. There are influences from numerous religious beliefs rolled into its lore and design, with everything from Shinto and Chinese mythology, Buddhism, Hinduism, and even the Egyptian gods all combined into this creator deity Lama. If you want to know more about that, then you're going to have to let me know in the comments below because I simply don't have time to go into it here. 
while you're down there as well, leave a like on the video because I don't ask for that nearly enough. There's then also the fact that when it comes to pulling inspiration from religious texts, well, it tends to get messy. Did you know that it's not even agreed upon whether the Ophanim are even angels? Some argue that they are simply wheels, purely a mechanism for travel and do not sit within the angelic hierarchy, whereas others place them among the highest echelon of angels. As you can see, to explain the great debates that go on within the study of angelology would be far beyond the scope of this video. Just know that their true form, purpose, and relation to God are, on the whole, still a mystery, which, ironically, only gives them yet another similarity <laughs> to the unknown, who, after over 20 years, have still to be fully explained. I mean, what's their connection with Suiku? Or ho -Oh? They seem to have the ability in the anime to make people's dreams a reality, so if the imagination theory about Scarlet and Violet's third legendary is true, will they be related to that? In my personal opinion, we'll never truly get an explanation for the unknown, because to do so would defeat the point of them. They are supposed to exist as one of the many mysteries of the Pokemon world that allows players to come up with their own theories. So at this point, you may be asking yourself, why did I bother making this video? Are unknown angels or not? Well, the answer is sort of, if you want them to be. After all, these games, much like everything else, have only as much meaning as you're willing to assign them. What you derive from this letter with an eyeball is entirely dependent on your knowledge and influences. The author's intent holds no authority once the final product reaches its audience. It is the right of each audience member to derive their own personal interpretation of the presented media, inevitably resulting in the construction of headcanon. Do you understand what I'm saying? Pokemon doesn't belong to Game Freak anymore. They gave it to us. It's ours now to enjoy however we wish. So in my mind, I like to consider Unknown as a form of angel, in the same way I like to think of Arceus as a god. Plus, I got to use Pokemon as a way to explore biblically accurate angels, which is just awesome. But in case you were curious about the author's original intent, this is a quote from Ken Sugimori himself, the man who designed Unknown. For the new designs, we tried to make Pokemon that would help balance out the roster, or ones we thought would look interesting in an evolved form, or conversely, ones that we wanted to see the pre-evolved form for. There were also Pokemon that just came in a sudden burst of inspiration, like Unknown. Usually, it's pretty easy to tell what the motif was for a Pokemon, right? This one's based on a bird, this one's based on a mouse. I had wanted to make one that wasn't so obvious, something with a more surreal design, like a Pokemon that had come from outer space or something. That's where Unknown came from. Hang on, from space? No, that can't be right. Let me check with a different interview. Some Pokemon went through dramatic changes as development progressed. For example, the mysterious unknown began as an alien-type Pokemon, but when artists began to sketch them, they started to look like letters of the alphabet. As a result, there are now 26 different types of unknown, each resembling a letter. Players can even use them with the Game Boy printer to spell out words and sentences. Oh my Arceus, these things are just random letters, aren't they? Well then, I guess that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you join me again on the next one. But until then, I'll catch you later. Continuing to make these videos would not be possible without the help from our channel members, and especially our Mega Tier members. Thank you.